Hi, welcome back uh, to my channel. So here I have an interesting uh, uh, setup here on my desk. I have two multimeters, a battery, an attenuator and a circuit. So this circuit is an amplifier. It's the QRP uh, Labs uh, uh, 10 watt amplifier. So this is something I really wanted to build and test uh, a long time ago. So about one year ago I did this episode. I discussed a very low cost configuration for turning the ACRF into an HF transmitter and a critical element of uh, this configuration was uh, this amplifier by QR QRP Labs. So it, uh, it is a 10 watt uh, amplifier, in fact uh, it can be pushed uh, even more, I think it can reach uh, 20 watts, so it, it has been tested uh, around 20 watts, but anyway it's a 10 watt. Um, but the important thing is that it's su super low cost uh, and it's uh, pretty heavy duty in the sense that uh, it has been tested to work a uh, uh, full uh, duty cycle uh, uh, with uh, open circuits, uh, so no, no output. Uh, so it's very difficult to break, in theory at least. Uh, so this is the specification. And so, yeah, I really wanted to build it. Then uh, I had other things to do, but uh, I finally managed uh, to do that. And this, uh, this is the result. I just finished this uh, uh, today, about one hour ago, and this is uh, the result. Um, so this amplifier, the moment, uh, so this is, uh, I plan to do several videos uh, about this amplifier. This is just uh, the very initial one where I want to see basically if it works. So I already, of course, uh, check that uh, electrical connections uh, works. There is no smoke, basically. But yeah, this is a kind of uh, the first test. And uh, several will follow because I really think this is a very interesting uh, device due to its uh, low cost. So I have a battery, 12 volt. This is an amplifier that works at around 12 volt. It can, it's flexible. I think it can, uh, can reach even uh, 20 volt, but 12 volt is the nominal uh, uh, official uh, voltage required. And uh, so this is confirmed by, um, by the multimeter here, which is checking the voltage at the input of the battery. Okay, here uh, on this, uh, so the device is turned on now, and uh, this is uh, this older multimeter is configured as an amp meter, so a current meter, and as you can see, it's measuring uh, 0 0.3 uh, amps at the moment. Um, there is no input. Um, at the, I mean, uh, the signal generator is not uh, producing anything for the moment. Anyway, the signal generator is going uh, inside the amplifier here. The output on the amplifier is going to this 30 dB attenuator, which is, uh, uh, this is a, a good uh, attenuator, is specified up to six gigahertz, I think, so it's very good, 50 ohm, but importantly, it uh, handles up to 50 watts, so it's completely okay for this uh, amplifier. And it is a 30 uh, dB uh, attenuator. And the output of this attenuator is going into um, the oscilloscope. So uh, in the future, I will also uh, plug in, uh, in, uh, in the spectrum analyzer, but for the first test, I want to, to use um, the, the oscilloscope, and um, of course, and the oscilloscope is properly terminated with uh, 50 ohm uh, impedance. And uh, yeah, basically, so the idea is that uh, this is a 20 plus 26 dB, or at least this is the specification. So let me show you um, if I can find it, yeah. So in theory, this uh, amplifies the signal by 26 uh, dB. And um, right, so now I have here my um, signal generator. is configured to uh, produce a, a s uh, just a sine wave at minus 26 dBm. So the idea is that if this works, uh, it will amplify this signal by 26, and so I will get uh, out and output basically of around uh, uh, 0 dBm. And uh, this 0 dBm is going to be attenuated by 30 dBm. And so we'll see, we'll see if this is, uh, this is the case, right? Um, so let me try uh, the first uh, uh, to, power, to power it uh, up for the first time. So here uh, you can follow um, voltage an amperage to see, I, uh, of course, the power, uh, I mean, uh, the amperage will go up most likely to handle the amplification. And um, 
and we will see probably something <laughs> if it works on, on the oscilloscope so let me turn on the power and there it is fantastic so I'm uh, producing uh, 40 megahertz and let me have a look uh, here the oscilloscope well you cannot see but it says 40 megahertz so uh, right so yeah it's a clean sine wave and uh, it says uh, um, here that the signal is uh, 9.15 uh, 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 millivolt RMS so I don't know exactly how to convert this uh, out of my mind um, uh, to a dBm but I can see the FFT of the uh, with this oscilloscope so let's have a look and the FFT well let me try to, to zoom uh, in a little bit the FFT yeah shows shows me that uh, I already centered it at uh, 40 megahertz and as you can see here we are just above uh, uh, minus 30 dBm so yeah the, the amplifier is uh, working as expected and it's pretty amazing uh, I mean that something that cost uh, $22 can actually <laughs> work uh, properly at the first uh, <laughs> um, sorry I have the camera here that doesn't want to stand oh, let me try to fix it okay something like that yeah okay so let me now try to increase the amplitude um, and here on the FFT we can follow if the amplitude uh, goes up as expected so at the moment with an input signal of minus 26 dBm the amperage is not uh, even increased uh, so much so let's see what happens I'm, I'm going to go directly to uh, let's say um, so 4 dBm right because 4 plus uh, 26 uh, is supposed to be uh, 30 dBm and so after the, the stage of uh, attenuation I expect uh, to see around 0 dBm here so let me go to 0 so uh, the amperage is mounting as you can see we are at minus 16 now oh, as you can see there are monics that are starting to to appear fair enough at the um, 28 and other harmonics so I'm at now 0 dBm input right but then uh, I'm not sure this is working as expected so let me disable the FFT and, and see here we have uh, about 200 millivolts of uh, so let me see again oh yeah the FFT was uh, out of scale because the amplitude was too large anyway so um, as you can see now let me uh, zoom in a little bit more we are just below uh, 0 dBm so probably we are at minus 2 dBm um, oh yeah because the I'm uh, yeah the, the signal generator is producing now 0 dBm so 0 plus 26 uh, means of course 26 and after the step of attenuation it's supposed to be minus 4 so we are more or less there so let me actually mount it to 4 dBm so yeah so we get above the 0 dBm that we were expecting so the amplifier is amplifying as it's supposed to be to do sorry and um, Sorry if I make uh, English mistakes, but I'm concentrated on, on this experiment. So um, now the amperage is has mounted uh, significantly to 0 0.7 ampere. And effectively now we are, I mean, the amplifier is outputting around 30, uh, 2 dBm. Okay, so that's uh, more than one watt of power at the moment. So let me just try to reach uh, 14 dBm from the signal generator because plus 26 th this will mean 40 dBm which is 20 watts and so after the minus 30 I expect to see a plus 10 uh, over there on uh, on the oscilloscope so let me go to 14 and there we are so now 
as you can see we are drawing two amperes out of the of the battery the battery is uh, precisely 12 volts which is great so uh, I guess uh, it's drawing 24 watts uh, overall right um, the amplifier so let me hear if it is warm yeah it is warm but it's not uh, boiling right so it's not frying which is good so I can see a lot of harmonics but let's see our main signal so um, so let's disable the FFT right so the signal is quite distorted right as you can see um, which is expected because we saw the harmonics on the FFT but uh, let's see I mean this is something uh, uh, these harmonics are something we can filter out uh, with a low-pass filter after the amplification so let me see uh, wh what the power is uh. so I have to reduce a little bit uh, the scale so uh, let me go to reference level there and increase it a little bit so let me put it 15 dBm so we can see more clearly and so let me try to zoom there so this is the FFT and it's showing we are but let me um, put the reference at 20 so it's even more clear there so yeah we are at precisely uh, 10 uh, dBm so <laughs> fantastic uh, the amplifier is amplifying precisely 26 uh, uh, dBm as expected and is producing the 10 watt of power uh, that is supposed to do uh, there are significant uh, distortions yes that's for sure we see with the spectrum analyzer in other in future episodes uh, how bad uh, these distortions are uh, but uh, this thing does does not want to stay uh, anyway sorry okay fair enough and um, yeah so at this level it's consuming basically 24 uh, watts of power to produce the 20 uh, sorry the 10 watts of um, output signal and I guess yes the difference is is going to dissipate it in heat yeah it's pretty warm now uh, this is a pretty big uh, heat sink but still very warm and uh, yeah so let me just try to to change the frequency just to see what is the response uh, at the max power uh, so now we are at 14 megahertz uh, so let me go uh, to 3 megahertz which is the lower limit okay so the input now is 3 megahertz and so let me disable yeah so here we have some <laughs> significant distortions but I read still about uh, the signal it's about 8 dBm so here we are amplifying something like I guess 24 dBm so okay let's move so yeah I guess at 3 dBm it didn't work so well but at 6 you see it's better so let's try to ramp up I don't know if this FFT has to do more with uh, the, the amplifier or the the software of uh, this FFT so let's we will check these things better with a uh, spectrum analyzer in the future but uh, so I just want to reach 30 megahertz to see yes if if the strength still is still there yeah actually here at uh, 30 megahertz which is the upper limit uh, the signal is only at 5 dBm so we have lost it looks like we have lost uh, about 5 dBm of uh, amplification but okay um, we'll see with the spectrum analyzer these things in more details but I'm pretty satisfied with this experiment oh it's quite interesting that now uh, at 30 megahertz uh, the amperage has gone down a bit so yeah I guess that's why the amplification has gone down so maybe there is something to tweak uh, somewhere maybe it's, it's not uh, working so well at 30 megahertz but at 14 megahertz which is anyway uh, basically is the um, the ham radio bands that uh, is the most popular um, here it's working spectacularly well as uh, 
as I was hoping and, um, and yeah I'm very happy so this was just the first video and uh, you can expect uh, more of these uh, to come because I want to check uh, all the details about this um, I mean all the specification all the behavior of this amplifier and uh, because I think uh, yeah it's a it's a great um, it's a great thing for 26 dollars it's fun to build it's pretty simple i mean uh, uh it's a bit uh, i mean uh, the, the, well i'll discuss that perhaps in another video oh by the way if you if you search in youtube uh, uh, qrp labs uh, 10 watt uh, hf uh, amplifier uh, you can find uh, several videos of uh, i mean a couple of people who did a tutorial basically you know how to build it and uh, it's uh, for me it was pretty useful so I just watched those videos before attempting to, to build my own, so everything was, was clear. And in fact, yeah, I didn't have any problem. The, the, the only thing is that um, this, uh, this board here is pretty dense. So, you know, you have to be very precise when you're soldering. But beside that, everything is super well documented in the, in the manual. And uh, it was, I mean, it worked uh, the, first, uh, the first shot. And... Um, I'm very happy about this and uh, if it works well as it seems uh, like it's, it's, it's doing right now I will probably put it in an enclosure and uh, a separate enclosure oh by the way here there is a pin that I have shorted that allows uh, basically if you drive that pin to ground it, dis it uh, activates uh, the amplifier and if otherwise uh, the amplifier is uh, turn uh, turn off so basically it's a uh, on off switch okay uh, it's pretty interesting at the moment i've shorted so it's always the, the amplifier is always on but if i put it in an enclosure i will uh, of course uh, add that uh, the possibility of driving that uh, that pin uh, uh, as it uh, i mean as it is designed uh, to do okay so thank you very much for for having watched this video i'll see you next time bye bye